Welcome to week one of the NFL preseason, where the rookies of today hope to become the stars of tomorrow. It's the Packers and the Browns, and it's all up next on EA Sports. We are within shouting distance of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as we get set for football on the late side here at Cleveland Brown Stadium. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and we finally made it, partner, through the winter, through the spring, now into the summer, and football finally back. And during that time off, we all cherish our vacation time, but admit it, you're the same as me. When you were working out, when you were doing things, you thought about football, didn't you? And you couldn't wait to be back up here again. Just about time to rock as Toe gets ready to need leather. And off we go from Cleveland. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. So the Packers make their way out for the first time, and it's Jordan Love that has the keys to the car here in his fifth season as a pro and second as a starter. And Love established himself as a legitimate franchise quarterback a season ago. And let's not forget... He had to exhibit a lot of patience, waiting for his opportunity to become the man. And once he got that chance, he hit the ground running. The question now from the rest of the league, can he sustain that success? The Packers certainly believe he will. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Call it officially a loss of two on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Love. They go play action now. That'll be caught right side. And oh, right away, he lost the football. And this is picked up by the Browns. No coach or team's ever happy when someone has a turnover. But if there's ever a good time to do it, preseason. Yeah, right now. You know that come regular season, he's going to be ready to go. And maybe he'll remember, yeah, I don't want to do this when it comes time for the games to count. So here are the Browns now with great starting field position. They will be led out by their dual threat quarterback, the veteran from Clemson. It's Deshaun Watson. And after two consecutive seasons where he played in just 12 games combined, they're hoping that this is a year where Watson finally shows that he was worthy of that massive contract they received back in 2022. Not that long ago, we are talking about him as one of the top quarterbacks in the league. And if he gets back on track, this team can make some serious noise as the year unfolds. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. To pass, here's Jordan Love. He has it complete to Christian Watson. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. A gain of eight and a first down. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and that'll make it second down. Jacobs going to try the middle. Pushing forward for three up to the 48. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. 
You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it, and that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short, but you got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. Oh, it's a wobbler here. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. Watson and the Browns now with a first and 10 at their own 22. A first carry now for Nick Chubb. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Now, during that run, an injury here. We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. Well, you hate to see this before the regular season even begins. Now, we'll take a break and come back. More preseason action in a moment. Off of play action, it's Watson. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Rashawn Gary that time fighting free and getting to the quarterback. Now Watson. Flushed out right. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. He's a talented runner, and that means he's always looking for bigger and bigger gains when he takes off. Certainly found some bonus yards there beyond the first down marker, and this early drive will continue with that extra jolt from his legs. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating a defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just stared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage, able to knock that one away. Here's Watson. Dancing to his left. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. Deshaun Watson, so multi-dimensional, able to scramble for the first. Well, I don't want to be a jinx partner, put the whammy on him, but I think we could be looking at all-time damn the ground with the way that he's going. Only a few quarterbacks in this league are capable of a 100-yard game, and he's halfway there just in the first quarter. This is a record-setting pace. Hopefully, he can keep it up, and we can have fun watching it. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. They run again with Hines. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. That's how you get right up off of the map, because on the last play, they stoned him in the backfield and dropped him for a loss. But he's the type of guy that scared me a little bit because he's not daunted. Just got right back up, showed some confidence, and picked up a first down with his very next run. First and goal from the three. They'll try the air now with Watson. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Elijah Moore from three yards out. And the Browns will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Extra point good by Hopkins. And it's now a 7-0 game. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Packers offense here coming back out for their second drive. The defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. Let's see if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. They'll begin on the ground with Jacobs. And he is going to lose yardage here. 
It's a loss of four on the first down play. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Reed. And he'll be brought down at the 34, well short of the first down marker. After one, 7 nothing on EA Sports. The Packers with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. Here's Daniel Whelan on now to punt. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. That'll go down as just a 20-yard punt. And the Browns will take over first and 10. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. Well, just two series in here, Charles, but everything's gone to script so far. They got a touchdown on their first drive. Their defense holds, and now they've got a chance to take a two-score lead. And to co-sign with you, exactly the start they scripted up. And really, that kind of start, that can set the tone for the game for them. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks, and when you don't, that's the result you end up with. And three yards there takes him to the 45. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. Now it's the backup, Winston. A quick throw there is incomplete. And that is how you respond after taking one on the chin to begin this game. Give up a first drive touchdown, go back out on defense, and completely shut them down to force a three and out. On fourth down, on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. This is a way, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. The Green Bay offense ready to take over. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Here's Pratt. He's going to go for a big play downfield. Oh, and that is incomplete. Seventh round picks, they go into training camp just hoping they won't be a casualty. He came out on the good side. And plenty of them, if they work hard, get an opportunity, they can turn themselves into a heck of a player. One of my favorite seventh round picks of all time, Marcus Colston. Big time receiver, coming out of Hofstra, ends up having a heck of an NFL career. They added a lot of talent to a roster that really needed an infusion of youth. They got a very good infusion of youth. And they didn't really reach to get anyone as well. They stuck to their draft philosophy, got the best players they could at the time they were drafting, and inserted them into their lineup. The offense on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. Pratt going to look to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. They'll bring a receiver in motion right. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Another catch for Melton. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. 
That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple at its second down. And we constantly talk about people being on the same page. In this situation, the two of them saw the play with the same eyes. They understood where the open spaces were going to be, and they found a way to get there to pick up a new set of downs. They'll run with a big back, A.J. Dillon. And he's down right around midfield after a gain of two, maybe three. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. To throw his print. Now he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. And based on my math, they've only converted one time thus far in this game. So you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. A special teams mistake there, no doubt. Just 26 yards officially on the punt. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Cleveland offense making their way out. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. Now Winston. That would complete to Prochet. And that's good for a gain of six. And it brings up third and five now. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders. Hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. They'll come up facing third and five. Jameis to throw it. Packer pressure, and down he goes. Looks like a nine-yard loss, and it also brings up fourth. He found his way into the backfield, and he simply would not be denied. Well, they say that life's all about opportunities, and that holds true when you're playing defense as well. How about him seeing that chance, making the most of it, did a great job of wrapping him up and bringing him down. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it'll be Packer football here. First down and 10. So good field position for the Packers as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Now Pratt. That's taken in. Dontavian Wicks. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch. But you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. To throw now, Pratt. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. This is what defensive coaches ask of their defenders every single ball game. Get a hand on every throw in coverage. They want the deflections. They want the knockaways. Pick it yourself if you can, but at least knock it down and guarantee it's incomplete. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. Those are the ones you dream of as defenders. I think if he gets eyes on the ball a little bit earlier, he might come away with it. Instead, it's going to wind up as just an incomplete pass. And that's going to be incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Here's Daniel Wheeler now. And how about this, a fake? 
And this is incomplete. A huge gamble, and it does not pay off. They fake the punt. It doesn't work out. And this defense will take over right at midfield. Final play of the half here, Winston. And he's going to go down. Couldn't get a throw off with the pressure. Maybe that was for the best, as that brings us to the end of this first half of play. So we have reached halftime in our first preseason matchup of the year. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. Back to you guys in just a minute as we've started the countdown to opening night. Remember, the preseason has shrunk from four games down to three. So just two more weeks of preseason action follow this, and then we get it all started on the first Thursday after Labor Day. In our game, the defenses look to be ready for the regular season. Maybe not the offenses just yet, but still a half to go as we get you back out to Brandon God. Most of the starters are likely done. These coaching staffs getting ready to evaluate the youngsters in the second half. And to call the remainder of this preseason opener, we go back to Brandon Godden. Okay, coach. Yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter and what's been a... Contest so far. Probably not likely to see many starters in the second half as we get back at it underway in this preseason opener. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape up past the 30. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off his third quarter. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation to pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. Shrugs the tackle. Nice. And this will be taken across midfield and into Green Bay territory. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Winston now. To the right side and intercepted. And the Packers are going to take over once again at their own 37-yard line. That is just what this defense was hoping for, an interception on the opening possession of this third quarter. Obviously didn't want to surrender a touchdown and fall even farther behind. And we've gotten to know this team a little bit, haven't we? Couldn't you just see their defensive leaders telling the offensive guys, telling the quarterback, don't worry, we got you to start things off. You take it from there. So here are the Packers now. They get set for their first possession of half number two. Now they just got a little help from their defense forcing the turnover. Now can they make that pay off in points? They need to, partner. They're down on the scoreboard. Need to take advantage of those opportunities. And this is a good one right in front of them. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball. And we see yet another errant throw as a result. Second and ten. To the right side, this is Dillon. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Not a ton of room available on that one, but he made use of what space was available and gained decent yardage. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Throwing his Pratt. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. And no move to get the offense off the field. Despite failing once, they're going to go again here on fourth down. Well, they've got the slim deficit. Decided to go for it. Hoping to keep the football score and erase that deficit. But, boy, deep in their own territory like that? Let's just say that with that call, me and the head coach, 
will agree to disagree. All right, but he knew he wanted to be aggressive there, as you pointed out. So I guarantee you, he told his defensive coordinator, have your guys up and ready. I'm going to go for it here. If we don't get it, just make sure they're ready to go out there and bail us out. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. Now Winston. That's into the hands of Prochet. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. They had great starting position to begin the drive, but now they look up at a third and five. From the gun, Winston. Flush to his right. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. That one a broken play, but it ends up being a good play. The scramble goes for 20. Working out of the gun, Winston. Looking middle, and that's complete. Now the stop will come inside the five at the four. Second and goal from inside the five. Ford is not going to advance very far. He'll be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. Well, they've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? Here's Winston. And that's going to be caught for Browns. Touchdown. Jalen darted from four yards out. And the Browns go up by two touchdowns. That seemed pretty ideal there for the offense, Charles. You take a little bit of time off the clock here in the third quarter, decent length drive, and you pad your lead as well at the end of it. And what it does is let you feel like you're in control of this game even more so than a two-touchdown lead, right? Because you have taken that time off, as you noted, which means they couldn't get you off the field. You ran your playbook the way you wanted to, and you gave your defense some rest. What a big-time drive in that situation. Hopkins with the extra point, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. through three quarters of play and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm put it mildly because they're not even over 100 yards yet and in today's NFL where it's a pass first league that is quite surprising not many teams patient enough to stick with the run everybody wants to advance the ball through the air they've got to get their timing back so from the 26 yard line here's second down and eight again it's Dylan and he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. That'll go as a loss of nine, and it leads to third down. Throwing now is Pratt. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. On now is the Packers punter. On, we think, to punt, though he's faked it earlier, but he was unsuccessful. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Browns have a short field in front of them now as they take over first and ten. The handoff to Ford up the middle. And a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. On the ground, it's Ford. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more preseason football on EA Sports. And we're back now here in Cleveland. It's the Browns football, and they've got the lead here as we start quarter number four. 
Now second and five. Here's Winston. He finds his man complete. That's Ford. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers' 15-yard line. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, stomped down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Second and six. Winston. And he's going to go down. Sacked right around the 17. Xavier McKinney. Credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. The Browns on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third down and 12. Throwing. Winston. Yeah, that one's going to be knocked away and incomplete. That's a really nice job there by the coverage, understanding that they're in a high-stakes situation. If he doesn't make a play on that ball, there's an excellent chance it ends up either as a touchdown or as a nice gain downfield. Hopkins' kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So that almost certainly the final piece to this puzzle, a three-score lead. I don't think there's any coming back from there. But you know, normally I'd get on you for giving up on the game right here, but I do think you're right in this case. This late in the game, two scores is tough enough. Three, I'm with you. That seems out of the question. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And certainly this, not the performance that they were hoping for to begin the exhibition season, but still plenty to watch for in this fourth quarter. Throwing to start the drive. Pratt, he's going to air one out. He's got a man complete. It's a big play there for Green Bay. 43 yards to get back in this ball game. Big plays are going to be necessary. And here's one right on cue. Coming up with three scores here in the fourth is not going to be an easy task, but that's good work there to bite off a chunk of yards. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 34. Looking to throw, Pratt. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. And they're at the point of the ball game now where they've got to take some chances. They've got to put the ball in the air and just see what happens. But this defense knows that all too well. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. And he comes back with one complete. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 23. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Back to throw again. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. And that's where you're counting on a receiver's size being an advantage. They were hoping he could go up the top of a smaller DB and haul that one in. A good thought, but that time it didn't work out. Again, he'll drop to throw. Pass complete across the formation to Melton. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. And this one incomplete. Oh, a dangerous throw. Nearly picked off in the end zone, but instead second down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, 
You can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, touchdown Packers from three yards out. And the Packers are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. So fourth quarter touchdown there, back to a two-score game, but time is not their ally. No, it's not, partner. They still have a pulse, but it's probably a little weak right now. A lot of things have to go right in these final two minutes plus for them. I think they have to be thinking onside kick here, and we know how difficult those are to recover. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. And oh, it's wide right. No good. So with the missed PAT in his rearview mirror, he goes back out to kick this one off. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner. And there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Has to. You said big third down. I'd put the word big in capital letters here. Now he's going to be a yard short. A two-yard pickup leads to fourth and one. You know, we might start getting some props here in the booth. You know, that one that says the D and then the fence that you put up next to it. How about that? They brought out the jumbo package and still couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage enough to pick up that first down. Impressive. They were ready defensively for that jumbo set. That'll be a 48-yard punt, one yard on the return. And the Packer drive will start from deep in their own territory with a first and 10. Here's first and 10. Throwing to start the drive. Pratt. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. Well, that's where this Cleveland crowd, the dog pound in particular, make it difficult on opposing offenses. It looked like they might have had troubles communicating at the line, and it leads to the incompletion. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. And now the focus is really clear. They need to get that first down and either get out of bounds or maybe use one of those timeouts. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Ah, oh, this defense has been so stingy all game long. No reason to think it's suddenly going to open up now. They took their shot, but this, like many others, falls incomplete. No choice but to go. Here's fourth down now. He's going to let it fly. And it's knocked away and incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And now possession will go over inside the 15-yard line. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And he'll find his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. So Cleveland able to come away with the victory here. 
And I think the game balls need to be distributed on the defensive side of the football, and I bet that you would agree. Yeah, if you hold a team under 10 points, that's a job well done. Really well done. So I would say game balls for every starter and every key player who participated in this game. Now, see, I, I only like one game ball. You just you're, like you're, one handing game out, ball? you're handing out multiple, although I set you up by saying game balls, plural, yeah, but, yeah, I, but, but I... But I like where we're going with this, though. You say one to I, represent, yeah. like, the best player of all yeah. of that, and I say multiples so that you keep everyone motivated and involved. You're a man of the people. I'm a man of the people. You... I thought I was the only child. You yes, get a like game ball, <laughs> and you get a game ball. Game balls for everybody. So for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon God. Next game, guess what? Charles and I will be here again. It's the NFL on EA Sports.